folks, we're back for another roll on granite epoxy technique. This epoxy technique is perfect for first time epoxy users or epoxy pros. This project is mega quick and easy. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. You got this. I'm gonna start with my lightest gray color and work to the darker colors and then I'll come back to my lighter layer just keep layering it the cool thing about this style of project is you're gonna know what your countertop looks like before you even mix up any of the epoxy we're simply applying a clear coat of epoxy and the epoxy part of this project is complete this is latex paint semi-gloss and I want to make sure it's completely dry a good few hours before applying epoxy so I don't need much of this. I'm gonna start with just a little bit. You can grab these faux painting sponge rollers right at the Giant Orange box store or check out the link in the description below. I'll leave an Amazon link that'll take you to a few of these. All right, just saturate this. There's kind of really no wrong way to do this. You don't want tons of paint on this roller. We're gonna leave random patterns behind as I apply different amounts of pressure and as the paint is leaving this roller, this roller is gonna just do all the hard work for you. Ooh. Just gonna switch direction and the amount of pressure I use to give myself different looks on this board. At first you're gonna go, um, I don't think I'm doing this right, but trust me, as you layer it all, it becomes fantastic. And don't forget those edges. You don't need much color on those edges. Layer one is done. <laughs> Maybe we won't even cut anything on this video. And you could literally watch in real time how to apply. Look, I'll even do this. <laughs> All right, let that dry. We'll come back for a darker shade. A lot of people are nervous in the beginning with epoxy, mixing all those metallics, mixing all the dyes. How's it gonna look? You now know how this is gonna look well before you put epoxy on. So I'm, I'm not gonna mix up my epoxy till I'm happy with how this looks. And three, four, six layers, as many as it takes. And you could even, I've, I've been watching online, you could plastic bag some veins in, give it a whole new texture, layer on top of that. Faux painting is funner than I ever imagined it would be. I watched Rhonda RK3 Designs check her channel out. She's a pro at it. She does some amazing faux painting with epoxy. It's a happy fusion. It's amazing. She makes some really pretty countertops. I'm nowhere near her faux painting skills, but that's why I found that roller. It turned me into a semi-pro faux painter. My second, my first, this is only my third faux painting project. I'm gonna let this dry. I'll be back in probably 20 minutes. To speed it up, folks, heat gun. That won't hurt anything. I just need to dry this paint before I can layer on that next color so I don't meld and make mud on those paint colors. So I'm gonna go grab my heat gun. Let's speed this up. All right, same deal, different shade of gray. So my first one, I don't like those streaks. I'm gonna kind of keep my grain flow going across my board. I'm using zero pressure there, guys. I just let it glide right across. Kind of steering it so it's not perfectly straight the whole way. But I'm keeping all my, my grain flow going across my piece. So I pushed really hard on my inside to give that. And the first time I did my faux painting, I thought I messed it up, but you don't mess it up. It's pretty cool, it adds, it's almost like a vein inside the stone when you get to layering it. I think that's enough for that color. Let's let it dry. Round three. We're going four shades of gray, not 50. This is called asphalt gray. As Soon as I add some white back over this section, this will come to life. 
Like as I'm heat gunning this, the thing looks 3D already as you layer those colors. It's kind of a cool look. And you know what? I just, I just had an idea. What if as a final step, I use the granite, the stone spray, ch -ch -ch -ch, real light to give it the speckles. I think that might look sick. And that gray and white one we got, we have, I think it's black, gray, and white specks it spits out. Hmm. Or maybe I just do a section of it, I don't know. I think that might add a whole nother layer to this that you won't be getting with the sponge roller, which is the little specks, which you see a ton of in mother nature. I'm gonna try it. I've just decided it's going on. I'm gonna do a few more layers of all my colors here. I'm not quite 100% happy with this. I have some blotchy sections, but when I bring in my lighter colors, it's gonna all tie together. The heat gun isn't necessary. I'm just trying to speed this process up so I'm not sitting here watching paint dry. Yeah, look at that, way different. Woo, that's looking good, dude. I am pumped about this. This is better than my brown one, in my opinion. All right, stone spray time. This is a 3D effect textured spray that's super hard to find in your local market. We have it stocked up in many colors over at the Epoxy Color Center on our website, Stone Coat Countertops. This alone over a, a painted board looks like a really nice countertop. So I think it's only gonna add to the detail. So I'll go about 12 to 15 inches away. I'm first gonna test to make sure it's spraying good. No, it's not. I didn't shake it enough. There, see, give it a good shake. So that's why you wanna test. Okay, now we're spraying good, perfect. So I'm gonna be about 12 to 15 inches away and light pumps like this. You don't wanna do this. You'll just leave way too much material on your piece uh, and it'll leave stri strips and streaks. Don't do that, light pumps, let's go, let's go. Ooh, yeah, it adds just a little bit of speckle. I hope you can even pick it up. You might not be able to. Hit all four edges whenever using the stone spray, start there first. So all these sponge rollers were the same sponge rollers I used on my first earth tone faux painting project where I made it look like granite. I would just wash them under warm water. You could use them job after job. If you're a contractor, I would recommend Having this style of countertop in your back pocket, uh, it's perfect for going over existing surfaces on site where you have existing backsplash. All your color techniques are on your board, on your splash. You're just putting clear epoxy. You're not putting metallic tinted epoxy that then runs on your vertical surface. It isn't the best look. Put clear on vertical surfaces. Your customers will be all smiles. Here we go. I hit all edges, not just a light, Dusting. This section's looking good, dude. Just adding some specs. I got blackstone spray. Should I try that? Tight. Let's do it. It adds some detail, but not that much. Well, let's try black. Yeah, that's the right call. Woo! I could do this in my sleep. Make it rain. Dang, that's tight. I'm not gonna go too much, that's it. All right, guys, I'm gonna let the stone spray dry a good 30 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. It's about 70 degrees in here. Oh my goodness, those specs added some sweet looking detail. I am pumped about that, that was a good call. Good call going black too. That gray was barely visible. All I was seeing was the black specs. So this one has much more black. This is a home run, it's a W, it's a giant win. I'm gonna come back to show you the quickest and easiest way to apply clear epoxy to your countertops. I'll be right back.
project is nice and dry, we're ready to apply a clear coat of Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. Applying a clear coat of epoxy can be done in just a few steps. We're going to apply three ounces of mixed epoxy per square foot of project. I'm mixing up extra because I have some more projects to pour onto. I've got some cutting boards I'm making, so I'm going to go fill up. I'm going to measure up 128 ounces, 64 ounces of B and 64 ounces of A. And I got some metal in there, didn't I? Because I have a couple more little projects, I have some cutting boards I'm making that require a clear coat. If you want to check out those projects, check us out on TikTok. That's where we're putting all that kind of stuff, man. TikTok's a bunch of fun, short form content there. We have a bunch of pro tips. Check us out on TikTok, Stone Coat Epoxy. Now, let's go 64 ounces of A. All right, hang on to that bucket. We're gonna mix for two minutes using a paddle mixer and a drill. All right, I'm gonna pour some of this bucket right into kind of the center of my project. Oh man, that already looks so sweet. That's probably plenty. Set that to the side, wow. Now I'm gonna use caution when I'm not trailing. Why? Because my color techniques are on the surface of my epoxy. So I'm just gonna let this notch trail glide right over the surface. Wow, I like it better already. And now I'm gonna start evenly spreading my material, just letting it glide. Try not to let it get off your top at first, because once you have an area where the epoxy is going off your board, it's now got, it now has an exit plan. This is really warm. You can tell how easily it spreads. So during the winter months, it's good practice to warm up your epoxy in front of a space heater or or in a warm water bath. You don't want to keep your epoxy on the porch as you're getting your project ready and then mix that up. It'll be really cold. So bring it into the house, let it get in room temperature, and then to help with mixing and help with, with the epoxy to flow real well, warm it up for 15 to 20 minutes in front of a space heater before you mix. All right, now that the epoxy is over the surface, I'm going to run some of it over my edge. Right like that. Okay, use my gloved fingers and just rub out your edges. Guys, project's almost done. It's time to chop this top. We chop the top using a two inch angled nylon brush. This little bad boy right here, you could pick these up at Stone Coat Countertops. So to chop the top, we're going to use the heel of the brush. That's this section right here and I'm gonna randomly cover the whole surface with the chop brush. This is eliminating those trowel lines and mixing this material one final time, ensuring a very, very good cure. There's no real wrong way to do this. Don't do it with the tip. I guess that's the wrong way. You can see how you'll be chopping all day. Whereas I do this, it's spreading out, it's covering more of an area. Boom, bro, this project's pretty much done. I am loving the black specs addition on this. Really pretty. I bet if I did the brownstone spray on my earth tone, whole nother level. I love it. All right, all right, I'm gonna show you how to use a heat gun to remove the air that you mix into the epoxy. I go maximum heat and put it on high, working our way from one end to the other. That's gonna eliminate the air. We'll need to sweep the surface with a heat source at least three times when applying a clear coat in the winter months. And if it's cold, you may need to torch a couple more times. You'll know you're completed because it'll be perfectly smooth. No air bubbles breaking up the surface tension. Bubble free, baby. What I don't like about the heat gun is the cord. So I'm holding it up so it's not dragging along in my piece. But you can see as the heat, the heated air hits your surface, it's breaking up the surface tension and popping all those bubbles. The epoxy then self levels and will begin curing. The heat does not begin the curing process. When you mix, that's when it begins the curing process. 
Stone Coat Epoxy is DIY friendly, so you have tons of time to work with this stuff. You don't have to be in a rush. You don't have to wear a giant respirator. Stone Coat Epoxy is VOC free, no nasty smells. You can use this in a small bathroom, in your own home, and you don't have to empty out the house as this thing cures. It doesn't have a strong smell whatsoever. When do you want to wear a mask? Whenever you're sanding. You never want to breathe sanded dust and you don't want to breathe sanded epoxy dust. So wear a respirator whenever you're sanding epoxy. That's how you eliminate air used in a heat gun. I'll let this cool off uh, about a couple minutes, come back and hit it again. Now I'm going to show you how to use a propane torch. It's the same exact process but cord free. So we're gonna hold this an inch or so, sweep the surface just like we did the heat gun. I wonder what isopropyl alcohol and metallics would look. I don't wanna mess this up. Let's test it out on one corner, I'm doing it. I'm here to test, why not? Air free now, that was easy. Should I do it? I don't know. What's, what's in here? I'll tell you what's in here. This is metallic powder from our, color, our epoxy color center. We have 50 plus colors. You can mix it up into 91% isopropyl alcohol. Give it a good shake. And you can apply colors with alcohol. This stuff does some amazing things in your exotic pores. It creates selling like this when you have paints and dyes and stuff like that in there. I'm just trying to add a little bit of shimmer as you walk past this piece. I really hope it doesn't mess it up. Here we go, I'm here to test for you. I'll just start with this half, and if it looks good, I'll continue on. If it looks bad, uh, you're only gonna see this section on the thumbnail. <laughs> I'm gonna see if it works. I'll hold it up above it, kinda make it rain on this piece. It may not even show up. Yeah, it may not even show up. Maybe I need to do white or bigger drops. So you'll see the dimpling, that's the alcohol hitting the epoxy. As the alcohol dissipates and goes away, it'll come back to self level. Ooh, I think that's gonna add some cool stuff to it. Where it really doesn't take away the look, but it'll catch the light in certain ways. This black metallic with 91% isopropyl. I'm not doing any more, that's it. Clear coat is complete. Guys, this thing's gonna be dry to the touch in 18 to 24 hours and ready for light kitchen use in 72 hours. I'm not too sure about the section I misted, the metallics. It added a little detail, but really not what I was looking for. I'm catching a little shine in the light. So if I was to do this again or do it in a customer's home, I would omit that step. This section, this whole piece looks fantastic. Guys, let me know in the comments below what color scheme do you want to see next with the roll-on granite epoxy technique from Stone Coat Epoxy? I hope you learned a few steps to give you some confidence to try this out over your old worn out existing surfaces. And from Stone Coat Countertops, don't forget you got this and we'll see you on the next video.